it's, it's a difficult uh, question because we have to go back uh, to history. I'm a Holocaust historian, so I'm most interested in the size of killings, of massacres, of destruction, as we say, of uh, Jews in Europe. Um, first of all, the problem is that there are so many. You know, we have the dimension of the crime that is so uh, uh, unbelievable. Six million people, only Jews, plus, you know, Sinti and Romas, gypsies, and other categories of, of victims. So you can imagine that the places of destruction are numerous. You know. We know, of course, the most famous one, Auschwitz-Birkenau, where close to one million Jews were killed. But there are many more. Which is interesting if you, interesting if you look out through the 70 years since the end of the, of the Holocaust, since 1945, is that we can define a period right after the Holocaust when exhumations took place. And we historians of the Holocaust, we are only at the beginning of looking at this history of exhumation. For example, in Poland, there had been 300,000 exhumation conducted right after the war. 300,000. So the dimension is, you know, everybody was exhuming, digging with, you know, very poor, you know, material, very uh, rough techniques, you know. But uh, in some places, there were memorializations, not everywhere. The six death camps, you know, the six death camps, the camps that were not really camps, they were places of, where Jews were transported to by train, uh, famous trains of the Holocaust, uh, and immediately killed, you know, the gas chambers, and then burned within crema crematoria or in piles, you know, with very uh, simple techniques of, of to burn the corpses. Those places have been, of course, memorialized very soon after the Holocaust, because so many people died. You know, think of Belzec, because it's 800,000 people. Um, in many of the smaller places you know, of, of killings, you know, memorialization have not, have not occurred. You know. uh, there was no, no survivors to come. There was no policy to memorialize, you know, the communist regime didn't want to memorialize all these hundreds, thousands of, of places. So exhumation took place uh, all over Eastern Europe. Memorialization were only, you know, for several places. Now, and it's a, it's a very recent trend, in the last, I would say, 10, 15 years, after the fall of communism, you know, after the regime change in uh, in Eastern Europe, then there has been attempts to exhume, but what to exhume? You know, corpses were burned. Very often there was the question of locate the remaining corpses that were not burned by the Nazis themselves, you know, in the process of destruction itself. Locate what remained. We don't know. You know. And locate the, the, the field of ashes, you know, the field of ashes. Um, and there is a tension now uh, between the need for knowledge, and the need for knowledge would mean exhume, or maybe sometimes dig a bit, you know, to know what exactly is under, under the, the surface, and the idea of, you know, sacred spaces to be memorialized with a total respect to the victims. And these te tensions is being negotiated in a very difficult manner by, by Holocaust archaeologists, you know, and Holocaust uh, researchers, and, and many other actors, you know, agents of this uh, process of mem memory. So that, that's very interesting. Uh, so what is the re relation about these human histories and the, and the history books, for instance? Mm. So what what... Do you learn in, in the schools or in the university? And what is the relation between the academy from this human taste? First, um, <laughs> so first, what uh, I uh, read from the Holocaust knowledge, the way it's 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 taught today in in uh, textbooks or in the media, you know, you have a huge presence, you know, of the of the Holocaust as the, the supreme evil of the twentieth century, etc. <coughs> it's very often you have a disappearance of the corpses, of the ashes of human remains. That's a first thing we can tell. So you have the, as if the history teaches us that the production, the mass production of the Holocaust was 
memorials, with no mention of human remains, ashes, etc., and trauma. Uh, we are obsessed by this, you know, all these trauma studies. They are very legitimate, but you know, I'm very often surprised to see that the first production of the Holocaust was corpses, human remains, ashes, bones, etc. This is our first, uh, I'll say, reflection. The second reflection, uh, after the disappearance of the, of the corpses, is that the uh, memory of the Holocaust is very often, you know, f concentrated on some sites. So Auschwitz-Birkenau being the, the main one, but in many countries you have one site. In France, for example, my country of origin is Drancy, you know, which is the transit camp where the Jews were in turn before being deported to Auschwitz and Sobibor. When, in fact, places of the Holocaust are many more. You know, Jews were kept in hundreds, thousands, thousands, thousands of places all over Europe. And this, the difficulty is to memorialize the, the entire European space, I would say. The entire European space. We have the, this interesting notion brought forward by a journalist, Mr. Polak, uh, which is a f contaminated landscape. And almost everywhere in, in Europe, I would say, the landscape has been contaminated by the Holocaust, whether a place of arrest, internment, refuge, uh, etc., or place, or, or mass graves, you know, mass graves, or, or field of ashes. Uh, so this is my second thought about this, to answer your question.